Hello and welcome to another video from the Micro Rooster. Today's topic will be the architect. We will be talking about how to view the architect access and take advantage of some of the features that the architect allows you to that are not available through the regular developer environment. I'm going to be using the MicroStrategy tutorial. The first step is uh, what is the architect or how to get to the architect. So once we're in our tool, we can go to our schema and launch our architect. You will need to access the architect. Not all users or developers will have this capability, okay? So you notice that there are database instances here and we can edit them as well. So let me right click and show you. We can update, we can look at different options and we can select a new database instance. Let's go to the options quickly. You can edit the database instance itself. And there's a few settings here for the reading settings. So let us look at under this database instance now. And we will see that some of these tables are included. Some of them are not included. This is the warehouse catalog in essence. It's telling you what you have and what you don't have. You can right click on any of them and update the structure. You can show sample data and you can see the elements. Let's take a quick look at this. All right, so it'll point out the element in this tab. But if you want to see the data, if you want to take a look at the sample of the data. So this is your metadata in essence. It's telling you what's available in this table. And there's a few more options here. We can update the structure. We can modify the database instance. So if I want to point it to a different database or add or remove, I can do that right here as well. So it has a lot of controlling, especially for multi-sourcing. If you're not sure about what options to use or how to use them, you can always press on the F1, which loads the help. The help will add some more documentation for you. It's going to have a list of all the information that you need. It can be very useful, especially for people who are using it for the first time. And again, just a reminder, you don't have to use the architect. You can do all the operations as an admin outside or as a developer. Let's look into some specifics. Let's look at the, in the database sourcing, as we said, we can modify or connect to databases. We can show the sample data. We can also add tables. So let's say this table or this table is not part of your, what you do is simply add the table to the project. This is already added, so this is gray. This is not added, so you can add it, similar to what you do in the warehouse catalog, okay? You can also expand here and see what are the items within each table. Let's look at the tables view now. Tables view is a list or a view of all the tables that are already included. Obviously, there's a lot of overlap. There's a lot of cover up here. There's different ways to, for you to zoom in and out so you can see this better and you can show the relationships as well. So maybe let's show the relationship. This will draw different lines between the different components. Obviously, if you have a busy environment, it becomes a little bit harder to untangle all this stuff. So you might want to zoom in or zoom out just so you can have better a few. So let's zoom out here so we can see that data model. And then you can drag and drop things by going back to the select. That we can. You also can edit the schema uh, by naming and mapping, etc. So let's go back to the, so we can see. So we can go to a table and right click on it. We can create new attributes from this table, correct facts. We can delete the table, we can rename the table, we can recognize them automatically, and there's a few more options and properties. Now, one thing that I do like about this is that it allows us to change a column name. Now, if in the database you change a column name, you know your schema will break. But if you use a column name, you already mapped it, and the, the, your database name for that column changes, then you have a problem. 
the architect lets you bypass that problem. One way to do that is you switch over to the physical view and you notice now you have all these names and edit and I can rename the columns. Now, as you know, if I rename the column and it's not in the database, I'm breaking it. So when I do that, so I'm calling it, just let's give it two, okay? It's gonna allow me to do that. But if I update the schema, I'm gonna run into problem. The trick here is once I update that item, trick is once I make that edit here, I, I can go now to the database, make my rename, and then I can update my schema. So if I do that in that order, I rename, go to the database, rename it there, and then update the schema. So instead of save and update, just save. And then after I make the changes in the database, I update. Actually, my treasure will pick up the new name. So you're all, in essence, you are tricking it. You're renaming it in the metadata then you rename it in the database, then you're updating the schema. So that way it allows you to bypass all the trouble you have to go through when a column has changed. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And the order matters. If you choose to rename a table, you know that it is, it is a problem. If you choose to change a table name, what you want to do is you want to change the table name right here in the database name and add your addition after you have already changed it in the database, but before you have updated the schema. So if I make this change right here, okay, it's telling me that this is not valid because this table is still not available in my database. But if I go change it in the database, then make my change here, it's gonna map all the attributes and all the facts that were mapped to this old table to the new table then you can go back to your database and remove the old table. And meanwhile, all of this is done before you update the schema, then you update the schema. So the order is you change the database name in the database, then you change it to the new table right here. Then you go back to the database, you remove the old table, then you update the schema, and the switch will allow my strategy to repoint all the items that were pointing to the old table to the new table without breaking the schema. This is the easiest way you can do this without re, uh, redoing any of your mapping in your schema. And it's a nice trick that I frequently use and it's very useful. Also just remember right after you rename in the database, you go to the warehouse catalog, you add the new table into your uh, project before you update the schema. So you need to include the new table in your data in your warehouse catalog before you can update the schema. Just by renaming it in the database is not enough for make sure to pick it up, you also have to remember to add it to the warehouse catalog. It's opposite to the order where I said change it here first, then in the database. With a table name, change it in the database, then come and change it here, then update the schema. And there's the logical size, you can control it from here, etc. So there's all these different options that you can play with. You have to know what you're doing to make these modifications. It'll show you all the columns and attributes mapped to it. You also can go to the factor attributes. Let's go to the attributes. So let's choose any item we want. Let's look up customer. And customer, it'll show us, okay, here's the customer attribute. And where is it going from or where is it coming from? It's mapped to different expressions. And it has also an alias. It's given us a bunch of information about it, the different forms it has. And you can edit right here. So instead of editing the attributes separately, you can actually start editing right here and making your changes. I don't think this is the best way place to make those edits. I think it's better to do the edits from the developer by right clicking on the editor, making your changes there. Even though you can make all the changes there right here, it's kind of unusual to do it in this order because there's too many things that you can play with here that you can easily get wrong and not know what you're doing. But if you do it the right way, which is from the developer, you will get it wrong, right from the first time. So I don't know, it's up to you uh, if you wanna play with the formats and the stuff here, these changes. But you know, just in case you wanted to, they are available. Same thing goes with the facts. 
gives you the name, the description if you want to add it, the alias, location, and all the different expressions that are associated with it. And you can modify anything you want. Obviously, it'll take you to the editor. Again, I do not recommend this to be your entry point for editing. I recommend using the developer, but it is available here. Some other tools, just quickly, we talked about the zooming in and out. You can also have an aerial perspective. Aerial perspective just gives you the big picture to see your data model. Obviously, this is a very busy data model. It's broken into different uh, subject areas or stars, but they're not organized in that format. But you could uh, zoom in or fit in a window as you need. Okay, so now one thing just to keep in mind, anytime you make any changes in the arrangement, etc., right here, so you can go ahead and start arranging your data model to make it look good and to see to be able to see the connections a little bit better. So you can just start moving things around. When you save, whether you save update or save and close, any movements you make will happen. Now, let's say you made a bunch of mistakes or a bunch of movements that you weren't sure about. Don't save, close out, and everything you've done will be forgotten. So until you hit that save button, everything that you do will not be picked up. Also, you can create special layers or some layers here so that you can have a few tables in them. So in essence, you can have one layer, for example, for each star in your model and have the tables related to it. It probably helps you focus your data modeling on one area, like time or geography or whatever you want. It's not going to be replicating. It's just another layer a new display so you can add to the new layer items that exist in the project tables view you're not taking them away from the projects table view you're just ordering them in a different uh, visual so that might be useful if you go to the design you can also start creating new attributes new metrics etc right from here without having to specify which table this is just going to the editors okay so similar to the editor they have in the developer box again not the usual way usually we just do it from the developer but you also can create database instances here so you have a little bit more flexibility if you're given that privilege sometimes you're not given that privilege you can do an auto recognize which I never use to recognize all the attributes or all the facts within a new fact table uh, one one thing that can be very useful is this guy here the editors here you will see all the tables and their value size. If logical size matters to you, which means how Mike Shiji picks one table over another, this comes in handy with summary and detail tables, for instance, or multiple lookup tables where you want one to precede the other in case there was a good key match on both or a valid key match on both. So you can go here and actually modify or manipulate your uh, for example, for this fact table, it's 39, but let's say there's another one that had a 40 and you didn't want this to be your primary pickup, you can change this to, say, 100. And that way, when Mike says picking between two tables that have equal match on the key, which is your key attributes, it will go with the table that has a smaller size, smaller logical size. Okay. If you're not sure about what does that mean, you probably don't need to be playing with this table. And let's go to one more thing in the Home tab. The hierarchies view is handy because it's obviously, it shows you the parent-child relationships. So in this case, we have, for example, shipper and order in a parent-child relationship for it. every order has a shipper. A shipper can have multiple orders. So there's a relationship here. If you click on it right here and, and look at the relationship table, say it's, or, it's using the order effect. You can delete it or you can convert it from a one-to-many to one-to-one to one or many-to-one. So it's up to you. This is a one-to-many. If you don't have this relationship, let's delete it. And you want to <coughs> create this relationship. You can also create new hierarchies. So you can just click here, create a hierarchy. And in your hierarchy, 
you can start adding attributes in your hierarchy and say, you know, I'm just going to do this, this, this. And here's my new hierarchy. Then I can start creating the relationship. In the tutorial, they already had created several hierarchy like customers, etc. They have multiple hierarchies here created for you. Look at and see what is what is we allowing where we define can we define browse attributes on this? Can we remove the entry point or keep it? Do we want users to enter from this point, etc.? We can do the same thing here. We can remove entry point. We can have it locked or unlocked, or we can even limit it. Uh, we can define the browse objects. What are we browsing by when we go to the lower level? So this is just creating a hierarchy. Where do hierarchies come in handy? Uh, when you're either filtering on a hierarchy or when you dis want to display the whole hierarchy. So instead of adding an attribute, you can display the whole hierarchy versus filtering on the hierarchy. So it has two ways where it works. And it also can be a drill. So you can drill within a hierarchy as well by drilling up or drilling down. So this is just creating that relationship. The system hierarchy is creating the overall relationship like the many to one by clicking on this we can see that this is the actual relationship between these items and the system hierarchy controls the overall relationship between the attributes which is more important and the independent hierarchies is creating the browsing relationship between the attributes and I think that's it for today thank you very much for watching this video for the architect overview.